Well, hi there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the All Around Growth Podcast. My name is Rob Kaiser, and I am your host. Today is Friday, August 5th, 2022. This is episode number 394 of a show that provides insight and tools to build the life and homestead of our dreams. Today's topic, or the topic of today's show, rather, is dealing with aging parents. And this is something that many of us are going to have to deal with us or deal with homesteading or not. And I'm not really clear why this is the topic of today's show, but I will tell you why uh, I chose it. Mm, A couple reasons. Uh, In life, what's going on right now is we are preparing for mom's 70th birthday party on Sunday. So there's a lot of activity going on here around the homestead. Lots of cleaning up in the cabin. I'm cleaning up around the barn, cleaning up the property, uh, just doing grounds maintenance, if you will, while mom and dad take care of the cabin in large part. And, um, And I've been spending a lot of time working with my dad and over the past few years i've just spent uh, i've spent more time around my parents in general and i am witnessing the aging process and moreover with myself as i get older i notice that there are certain um, things that aren't as easy as they used to be which is why i have an increased focus on flexibility and mobility because some of the things that were easier in the past aren't as easy as they used to be. And I presume that in another 30 some years, they are going to become increasingly difficult. And being around my parents, that makes me think of, you know, what, what, what is and isn't easy and how I can better support them as they get older, because it's always been a bit of an interesting dynamic, uh, even as an adult having epilepsy and being around my parents and having them serve as the caretakers. Whereas now, as they, or as we all enter into a new period of life, I really need to begin serving as the caretaker. So. For whatever reason, that was on my mind this morning, and I pulled up my internet browser of choice, which is called PreSearch. And for those of you who don't know what PreSearch is, I'll just share real quick with you what and how PreSearch is described, okay? PreSearch is a search engine that is decentralized, powered by the community, and uh, it's building a complete ecosystem to support the PRE token to provide the world with, like I said, a decentralized search engine uh, with this community surrounding it um, that's based on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, beyond that, what do I know about it? Not much. So I don't know if you want to check it out, there's a link in the show notes, feel free to do so. And uh, if you have alternatives as to why I shouldn't use this uh, or and reasons why I shouldn't use this and alternatives to this, by all means, send them my way. But when I dealt or when I typed in dealing with aging parents, into this search engine, I got three, the three articles that were on the top of the list were titled how to cope with aging parents, difficult parents advice, nine types of issues to address when helping older parents. And a third article titled, what does the Bible teach about caring for older parents? Okay, so we've got how to cope with aging parents, 
Family caregivers can use a variety of self-care strategies to keep their caregiving strain manageable. These include joining a support group, asking for help. Uh, that's interesting. And then we've got the biblical tip about aging parents. So we're going to look at nine types of issues to address when helping older parents. And this is an article from betterhealthwhileaging.net written by Leslie Kernison, MD. And I will scroll through it. There's a looks like there's a healthy amount of comments as well. And I'll go ahead and read some primary points from this, but again, I will link to this in the show notes so you can read it in depth and follow the links embedded within this article at your leisure. Most older adults don't need much help from others. In fact, many of them are quite busy assisting others and otherwise contributing to their families, communities, and or workplaces. But of course, many older people eventually do need some help from others especially if they live into their 80s, 90s, or beyond. After all, only a minority of people transition from being fully independent to deceased with no intervening period of needing assistance. Wondering how to get an older person to accept help? That is covered here in an article that is linked to titled Six Steps to Take When Aging Parents Need Help Even If They're Resisting. And when an older person does start to need help, it tends to be close family members, assuming the person has family, that step in, spouses, adult children, siblings, nephews or nieces, grandchildren, and so forth. In fact, family members are by far the number one source of, quote, long-term care supports and services for older adults. Now sometimes, and there's a link to that with some information, I presume. Now, sometimes providing this elder care support can be fairly straightforward, a little help with transportation or arranging for some assistance with shopping or household chores. But in other cases, family members find themselves having to take on quite a lot. This is often due to health issues affecting the older person's ability to remain independent and manage various aspects of life. Some situations that commonly bring this on include an older person starting to develop dementia, such as Alzheimer's or a related condition, advanced chronic illnesses that limit daily function and or cause frequent hospitalizations, such as advanced heart rate failure, chronic pulmonary disease or a progressive neurological condition, sudden disability after a fall, stroke or other health emergency, Difficult recovering from a hospitalization, especially if the older person experienced delirium or other complications. Or advanced age, which can eventually bring on general frailty and loss of physical strength. Very advanced age also tends to bring on more noticeable age-related cognitive changes and is a strong risk factor for developing dementia as well. Now, most people are happy to help an older parent or other loved one in need, but it's also common for people to find it difficult, especially when the older parent is reluctant to accept help or make changes, which is probably the norm rather than the exception. Now, trying to help an older parent tends to bring up lots of different issues that people haven't prepared to address. And many people must continue to tend to their jobs, children, and other responsibilities as they also start trying to figure their new caregiving role. Over the past several years, both my in-person doctoring work and as an aging health expert writing online, I've seen countless people struggling to sort out just what their older parent might need help with and how to help. So in 2019, I created a Helping Older Parents online program to guide people through this. And I will link to this as well, guys. And again, I'm reading work by Leslie Kernan, or Kernisan, MD, from Better Health While Aging. And I will link to this article that I'm reading from now along with Helping Older Parents online program. Um, in the case that may be of benefit to you. As part of the 
related helping older parents course, she created a list of the key domains that family caregivers usually have to address at some point. And since most of our members find the list really useful, I thought I'd share it below. Now, these nine domains to consider when helping older parents with elder care are as follows. Helping with activities of daily living, the ADLs, and instrumental activities of daily living, the IADLs. These are key daily life tasks, which she describes in more detail here, an article linked to titled, What are Activities of Daily Living and Instrumental Activities of Daily Living? Now, older adults often first need help with IADLs, which include things like managing transportation, finances, shopping, home maintenance, and meal preparation. An older person's need for assistance with ADLs and or IADLs often determines what kind of care arrangements or housing arrangements a family might consider. Number two, safety issues. This includes addressing issues such as financial vulnerability or even exploitation, falls, driving concerns, and more. Number three, medical and health issues. Medical concerns are fairly common in late life, and many older adults have chronic conditions that require medications, monitoring, and other forms of ongoing management. Older adults may also develop new symptoms or health concerns and may need their family's assistance in getting evaluated. Family members often help bring up questions and concerns to the health providers. Now, most people will also need help when recovering from an illness. Serious illness or chronic conditions can cause older adults to lose the ability to make their health decisions or oversee their own medical care. Family members must often make decisions due to a health emergency or a mental decline. Number four, legal and financial issues. Some older adults may lose the capacity to manage certain types of financial or legal affairs. And even cognitively intact older adults are vulnerable to financial exploitation. Family members must often consider, you know, I'm just, I'm pausing because, you know, especially in this world now with scams and everything else, that is the truth. And quite frankly, I've worked with people my age, my peers who have gotten scammed. Um, it's, 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 uh, be careful out there. Back to the article. Family members must often consider assisting with legal and financial issues, planning ahead and completing the necessary legal paperwork, which there is a link to, can make it much easier for a family to assist if, when it becomes necessary. Number five, housing issues. An older person's housing situation often affects quality of life, safety concerns, the ability of others to provide assistance and more. And families must often consider questions such as, is the current housing situation a good fit for aging in place? Is a more supportive environment, such as moving in with a family member, potentially necessary? And what other options, for example, assisted living would be financially viable and could be considered? Number six, the quality of life and helping your older parent thrive. Now, beyond meeting basic needs, most families are also concerned about their older loved one's quality of life. This means considering issues such as social connectedness, purpose, autonomy, and dignity. It's also essential to learn more about what matters most to the older person and what kind of things they consider less important or would be willing to trade off. Number seven, planning ahead. Things to plan ahead for include future declines, emergencies, and end-of-life care. Planning ahead tends to reduce later stress, hassles, and sometimes expenses. Number eight, managing ex relationships and family dynamics. Trying to help an older parent often brings on relationship challenges and difficult emotions. Well-intentioned people often inadvertently treat older relatives in ways that threaten their autonomy or dignity or otherwise strain the relationship. It is also common for family caregivers to experience relationship challenges with siblings, a caregiving parent, or others who are involved. And most people benefit 
from learning and practicing better communication skills to better manage these relationship dynamics. Boy, if that isn't the truth, uh, I don't know what is. So I will repeat that one more time if you weren't paying attention. Most people benefit from learning and practicing better communication skills to better manage these relationship dynamics. And finally, number nine, self-care. Helping an older parent is rewarding, but can easily become a source of chronic stress. Because family caregivers are often busy, they can easily neglect their own needs and well-being, which can jeopardize their own health and also affect their ability to care for and connect with their older parent. Family caregivers can use a variety of self-care strategies to keep their caregiving strain manageable. And these include, include joining a support group, asking for help, setting boundaries, allotting time to tend to one's own health and other needs and more. I found that family caregivers can benefit from learning strategies to organize and prioritize what they are working on. As you can see, and as many of you already know from personal experience, helping an older parent in late life can be a pretty complicated endeavor. This is in part because all the above domains tend to interact and overlap with each other. Some examples. <clears throat> An older person's medical situation often affects their ability to manage ADLs and IADLs and their caregiving needs. And again, ADL is the activities of daily living. The intensity of the medical situation often affects how much time an older person and their family spend with health professionals, which affects everyone's quality of life. And a family's legal permissions to assist determine how easily they can help with medical issues, housing issues, financial issues, and more. Now, relationship dynamics and a family caregiver's self-care affect caregiving stress, which then affects one's ability to help a parent and the type of energy and patience one is able to muster when communicating with others. And sorting through decisions, whether about safety, medical, housing, or anything else, should always involve considering the older person's quality of life and what matters most to them and so forth. Are you, are you currently trying to help older parents? If so, the author hopes that you'll find this list useful. There's a lot going on, but with some persistence, you'll eventually sort your way through it all. And just don't forget to address your self-care, okay? And if you're having trouble getting a parent with memory loss to accept help, be sure to check out this free online training posted below. And again, I will link to this in the show notes, Helping Older Parents Online Programs and Courses. Uh, in it, she teaches a simple but effective method that will reduce conflicts and make it easier for you to help your aging parent. And she closes the article by writing, thank you for doing what you do for your older parent. And guys, if you are out there working with an older parent, thank you for doing what you're doing. You know, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm lucky in the fact that uh, my, my parents who are in their 70s, my mom who is 70 and my father who's 76, are in fairly good health. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, we all die, no matter how good of shape we keep in, no matter how good of a health we maintain, we all die. Now, that's not an excuse to not engage in self-care, but when you consistently don't do these things, it oftentimes happens much sooner than later and the symptoms of not engaging in self-care begin to show. So this article, these nine domains to consider when helping older parents with elder care, 
I think this is really, really important. It helps us identify what these activities of daily living are, helps us take a basic look at at life. So, you know, let's, let, let's look at that. I mean, real quick, some of the activities of daily living that, that older people are going to be impacted by, and, and especially by not being able to participate in, are walking, feeding, you know, dressing and grooming, like selecting clothes and putting them on, adequately managing one's personal appearance, you know, using the bathroom, getting to the toilet, cleaning up, bathing, transferring themselves, moving from one body position to another, from a bed to a chair, from a chair to a wheelchair, and also the ability to stand from a bed to a chair or being able to get up off the ground. Have you ever watched one of your older parents try to struggle getting up from the ground if there's nothing to grab onto? You know, so these are things to think about, and this is maybe an article to consider, I don't know, sharing with your parents, but, but, but obtaining information from in order to have the discussion with your parents. You know, so in addition to just understanding what these activities of daily living are, what safety issues there might be, medical and health issues, legal and financial issues, housing issues, quality of life, and helping your older parent thrive, planning ahead to managing relationships and family dynamics, and last but certainly not least, engaging in your own self-care so that you are better able to manage the lives of others Guys, we really got to take care of ourselves if we want to help others take care of themselves and ultimately, in this case, take care of others for when they're not able to do so themselves. Because if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're certainly not going to be able to help take care of others. So how do we best take care of ourselves? We live a balanced life. And how do we live a balanced life? We set goals in all seven areas of life. And today we're talking about family, but those other aspects of life that we you know, need to find balance in are financial, physical, personal development, spiritual, social, and career in addition to the family that we're talking about today. So you can learn more about how to effectively set goals by checking out the show notes where you will find links to not only all the articles outlined in today's episode, but also a link to the 2022 goal setting workbook. And yeah, I'm sure there's maybe someone out there that's thinking, hey, it's August 5th. I can't do the 2022 goal setting workbook. It's already August. It's too late in the year. Really? I remember saying that once. <laughs> not, not specifically with this 2022 workbook, but I remember, you know, thinking, I can't do this. I can't. I can't. You know, because it was about New Year's resolutions and setting time frames. This, this isn't about, you know, resolutions and setting time frames for the new year because you know what if you're doing that like yeah you, you you you've set yourself up for failure because it is august we're well into q3 my friends so don't take that approach new year's resolutions are stupid set goals set long-term goals three-year plans break it down into one-year segments break that year down into one month actionable tasks and make some progress in your life, get shit done. 
take care of yourself and put yourself in a position so that you're better able to take care of others. You know, do the work because you're important enough and damn it, your family deserves it. So guys, I didn't mean to end all charged up, but you know what? I'm looking forward to the day ahead. Got a long day of getting more stuff done around here, prepping for this party, getting ready for the farmer's market tomorrow. And uh, I don't know, I'm pretty pleased with, with what the uh, search provided this morning. And I look forward to sharing this episode with you. And I look forward to the chat that, that uh, is generated from this in the Telegram chat group, which you are more than welcome to join and encouraged to join at t.me slash allaroundgrowth. That is where we are most active on social media. And in addition to all of the articles and everything that was previously discussed that will be linked to in the show notes, there are also links to all of the social medias and links to a video on how to leave a rating and review in Apple Podcasts, which at this time is still the most effective way to gain traction and help expose the audience to new members. Yes, I understand it's Apple. Yes, I understand that uh, it's the matrix and the machine. But look, based on the statistics that are available to me, the majority of listeners are still coming through that platform. So if you don't like Apple, that's cool, man. You don't have to. Um, quite frankly, I don't either. I stopped subscribing to the cloud and I'm in the process of, you know, de-engaging from that matrix myself. So I get it. It's cool and I appreciate where you're coming from. With that said, what I would definitely, you know, be stoked on is if you go ahead and share these episodes on your social media of choice and support the show in whatever way you feel is appropriate. So, you know, one way that you can support the show as well is signing up for the York Meadow Farm email newsletter. I will link to that in the show notes too. That way you'll keep tabs on our online store and what's coming up for the fall. And, uh, you know, just get a better line on what's going on with the farm and homestead. So anyways, guys, I really appreciate everything with the community that we've got, um, the dialogue that takes place there. And the life that we're co-creating together, I'm supremely grateful for it. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. And I definitely look forward to catching up with you on Monday. Take care, guys. This is Rob Kaiser, and thank you.
that I believe in friendship and love. Truth is always the best way to the world that may seem odd. I'm an odd fellow. You're an 